So I want to talk about the very next step that you do if you get a sudden loss of pressure after intubating a patient. Imagine that situation where you've put a tube in, you've connected the tube to the circuit and then you're about to get that first ventilation and you get this sudden loss of pressure. Now what you might think is that the tube is now outside of the trachea. So if you get a sudden loss of pressure, you must be in the esophagus, the stomach, or anywhere outside of the trachea in the mouth, because that's the only way you get this sudden loss of pressure. But I'm gonna tell you that that's not necessarily the diagnosis. Imagine you have this endotracheal tube, and it's outside of the trachea. As I try to insufflate, you're gonna get gas just running out with no resistance. If it's in the trachea, you'll get a nice bouncy sensation and normal ventilation pattern. Now imagine you put the tube in the trachea, but there's severe bronchospasm or some other kind of obstruction like a foreign body. Now what that looks like is there's gonna be a severe resistance to flow. Now what commonly happens is because my valve is on about 20 of pressure straight after intubation, that means that my first attempt at ventilation is gonna feel like this. So I get a very similar loss of pressure even though I'm in the trachea. Now the, re the reason for that is that my APL valve is only on 20. I've got such a severe obstruction that it feels like the air is just lost. So I'm gonna tell you that the very next step once you've intubated someone and you have a sudden loss of pressure is to turn your APL valve up to 70. And what that does is it gives enough pressure in the circuit for you to diagnose a bronchospasm. As you can see, I have no loss of pressure there. It's still extremely tight. And now I know that I'm in the trachea, but I've got a severe obstruction. At lower pressure, say 20 of pressure, I get a loss of pressure, but with very high pressure in the circuit and an obstruction, that diagnosis is evident. Now the very next step is I've got to diagnose this. So what do I do? I auscultate both lungs and what you most commonly find in severe bronchospasm is actually no air entry, so it's very, very silent lungs, or you get some level of wheeze loud or quiet. If there's truly an obstruction, such as a foreign body or some kind of kinking in the tube, I can pass a bougie down the tube and I shouldn't get resistance. Putting a bougie down the tube is a very good way of seeing if there's an obstruction to flow. At this point, I need to institute bronchospasm management, which means you know, having my pressure up reasonably high, F5 to on 100% oxygen, and try to get some level of oxygenation or ventilation in. And at that point, I immediately start giving medications, for example, salbutamol through the MDI in the circuit. I just give six to 12 puffs straight away and try to ventilate to open up those lungs and relieve the bronchospasm. At that point, I might turn the volatile up to 4% to try and get some bronchodilation from there. I might even give magnesium and ipratropium bromide. In the worst case scenario, when I simply cannot get any ventilation in. I might even give small aliquots of adrenaline, so that's it. If you ever get a loss of pressure on that first ventilation after intubation, your very next step has to be turning the APL valve high up to 70, and that's the only true way to diagnose a high pressure problem versus a low pressure problem. Thanks for watching.